So you've created a killer online course and you've outlined it and you are ready to take it to market but you have no idea where to begin. Stick around because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my eight stress-free tips to creating and launching your online course. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, Miss Jennifer Marilla. This YouTube channel is for coaches, creators, and online service providers who are looking to grow their online business. If that's right up your alley, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you're gonna wanna stick around. I drop videos every week. And if you're excited to learn about my tips for creating an online course that is so easy, then grab a pen and paper and hit that thumbs up button because we're about to get started. <laughs> okay, my friend, creating an online course is a lot of work. I'm not even gonna try to like, you know, sugarcoat it here. It can get extremely overwhelming. If you don't have a step or you don't have a process to be able to keep track of what needs to get done, things can get a little hectic. Trust me, I know, I've created a few of them. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you the eight steps that I use to create my online course that is super stress-free and it's easy because a lot of the times we tend to think of the outcome of creating an online course and we get so overwhelmed with like, oh my God, I need to do all these things that we don't actually get anything done because it's actually super easy. It's really not that hard. And my best advice is that you wanna start with the micro tasks and break things down little by little. So with that being said, I hope you have a pen and paper. Let's dive in. Before I dive into creating a stress-free online course, the first thing I wanna tell you guys is that you need a system to manage your progress and to manage your, system, your steps. So I use ClickUp and I'm just gonna show you right here my board. It's a quick process of how we do this. This is an example of one of my courses um, that had to get done. And we use this every single time we're like launching and creating and everything. Um, even when we do reviews for online courses, sometimes when I do an online course and I review it, um, I review my courses at least once or twice a year. And so we go back to the ClickUp board, we figure out what's needed and what's in progress and all that stuff. If you guys want me to do a video on how you review online courses and kind of update them, then let me know in the comments below and I'll go ahead and put that together for you guys. But ideally what you do is you create a massive to-do list, right? And then you drag and drop where things need to happen. So for example, for module five, this is actually done. So it would have been in reviews and then we go ahead and we would actually turn it into complete and that would be it and it would be dragged over here like the rest of the modules that I kind of created. Again, this is really great because we can do it in the board view, we can do it in the list view, and this basically gives us an idea of what exactly has been done and what still needs to be done when you're creating an online course. Okay, so having a cohesive workflow and like using ClickUp is super valuable. And so that is my biggest recommendation is that you put together a ClickUp or Asana or Trello, whatever works for you, whatever you utilize for your business, but have a project management system and write out all the things that need to get done. Which leads me to number two, planning your modules in detail. So what I typically, typically like to do is I just pull up a Google Doc and I start writing the outline of the course, just like I were to do an essay in college where I'd have like a header and then a subheader and then I have all these topics. That's what I would do inside this Google Doc. Very simple, I would outline it. This takes me about two to three days because I find that when I brain dump and then I go away and I come back and I go away and I come back, I'm always adding and taking, taking things away. So it makes it a lot easier to be able to edit before I dive in to the next step that I'm gonna to explain to you in a second. But again, writing out the outline of the course and all the modules then also really helps you utilize ClickUp and creating that perfect to-do list so you know exactly what needs to get done when. Okay, so this leads us to number three where I'm talking about writing out the scripts for the modules. Now, you don't necessarily need to write out a complete script for each of the modules, but I find that sometimes it helps. This is kind of however you like to do things. What I typically do is like once I've outlined the modules, I then go to each of the modules and I start writing out the presentation or I start writing out some of the bullet points that are needed just within that specific module. So again, this is really up to you what works best for you. Some people need a full script and then they take that script and they turn it into a presentation, which I will talk about in just a second. Or you could just take that module and turn it into an in-depth outline and then turn it into a presentation. So this leads us to number four. This is creating the presentation. So this is typically what I do. After everything is in Google Docs right now, so nothing needs to be brand associate, like nothing needs brand colors, nothing needs any of that, right? So in the Google folder, you wanna pull up Google presentations, okay? And what I typically do is I start writing out the presentation. There's no design on the presentation, it's just a plain white presentation. I have my title page, I have my subheader, and then I start breaking down 
the core of the modules. And so sometimes I'll have a 45 page presentation and sometimes I'll have a hundred. It really depends on the module and how long it takes you to really explain what you're trying to teach people. After you feel that you've done that process where you've mapped out the editing process for each of the modules, and my recommendation is that you do a module at a time. Don't try to do everything all together. Really break down the slides into a module separately because then what happens is when you go back to review the modules or update any of them, you can just pop into that Google Drive and edit what needs to be changed then go back to designing whatever needs to be changed and then you can re-record and it becomes a lot easier okay okay so before we continue let's kind of do a review of what i've said so far so you want to set up your ClickUp management board then you want to create a google doc with an outline just a skeleton outline of what's inside the modules and then you want to create a script of each of the modules in a separate google doc for each of the modules or just an in-depth outline then you want to take a presentation, just a plain Google presentation document, plain, no design, nothing. And you want to start outlining the presentation. This takes me about two to three days as well, because what I'll do is I'll write it out and then I'll go back and edit, write it out again, add some stuff, take some stuff out. I like to read the presentations out loud because I know what I'm teaching. And then after I feel super secure and ready to go, and maybe you've checked for grammar or any edits or anything, I then go to the design phase, right? I'm at a point in my business where I have a team that helps me execute this, so it gets over to my graphic designer. But if you're someone who's doing this alone, and I've done it alone, my very first course and several courses after that, <laughs> I definitely did it alone. What I then would do is I would go into the design phase and I would use canva.com to create my designs. Nothing too fancy. You want to keep it simple because you don't want to distract people. The point of the presentation or the point of the online course is to get somebody to receive a transformation and to really learn. So it doesn't need all this fluffy, fun stuff. It just needs information and needs to look nice and presentable and professional. So keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> all right. Okay. So this leads us to number five. Now this tip is optional. It really depends on how you like to present and how you need that support to happen. Because a lot of the times when people get on camera, they forget everything that needs to be said. I'll talk about this a little later, but honestly, I totally get it. So my fifth tip is get a teleprompter. Get a teleprompter that allows you to write the script that you've written out or even bullets on um, a screen so that you can read when you're on camera. I personally don't use a teleprompter when I'm recording my presentations. I will also say that I'm not on camera when I'm presenting presentations. When I'm creating an online course, I'm only on camera twice for the welcome video and the closing video and I update that every year and that is it. The rest of the presentation, it's just presentations and me talking. I really try not to be on camera because again, I'm not trying to distract my audience. I really want them to focus on what is happening and I find myself being distracted between looking at the computer screen and then looking at my notes that I have about the presentation, okay? So you don't have to worry about getting all pretty when you're recording these slides. You just need to do it, okay? All right, so getting a teleprompter and writing out a script so that when you're recording, you have that script for the recording session. But also, if you're not gonna be on camera, then you don't necessarily need a teleprompter. You can just have the notes or your script on a computer, and so you have two computers, okay? The second option within that is some people don't need teleprompters like myself. I just have bullet points about things that I need. So as I said earlier, you take the outline and then you take a piece of the outline module and you dive deeper into a deeper explanation. That's what I use as like my script. And so I don't really read from that, but I use that as notes and bullets so that when I'm recording my presentation, I know exactly what I need to say. This leads us to tip number six. And so this one is a breakdown of two. Like I said, you don't need to be on camera unless you're doing a welcome or a closing video. And usually what I advise is that you pick a day to film, okay? Like one whole day where there's no interruptions or nothing and you can film and batch as much of the online course as possible. So if you're just gonna show up at the welcome video and the closing video, then I would make sure you have space, good lighting, good sound, and you just say what you need to say for those videos. Those videos shouldn't be more than three to five minutes. Um, I would even say less than that, the better, the sweeter, the better. Um, but that's what I would do for recording for being on camera. I'm going to jump into my computer. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I record a presentation slide. 
Okay guys, so I'm just gonna give you a quick tip on how to record a presentation. So let's just say this is my online course and I'm gonna go ahead and record this. So what I would do is I would actually go on Zoom and I would press a new meeting and then within the new meeting, I probably would come up twice. Yes, there I am, hello. And so what would happen is I would share my screen just like this. I would X this out um, and I would turn this into a presentation and I would go ahead and record the entire presentation just like this. Make sure that you're actually pressing the record button. You don't need to do that for this video, but you press this record on the computer. Because what will happen is when you're done recording, you just exit out, stop sharing, end the call. And if I had pressed the record button, there would be a uh, uh, just an information box that would come up somewhere here in the middle of the screen telling me that it's downloaded the document or downloaded me the presentation or the recording I should say and so then I would take that and then I would upload it into the online portal wherever I'm going to be selling the course. So that was super easy right it's not complicated again I don't really show my face so if you're recording a presentation I like to remove my face I just showed you guys an example so that you can see my face but when I'm actually inside my courses I actually don't show my face at all because I don't want to be a distraction I just want people to get the information and be able to take action and it's just easier for me to not have to show my face and just do the damn thing so on a day that I am batching content and recording for my online course what I do is I batch it and I just pick one specific day and I batch as many of the modules as I possibly can so that it makes it so much easier and it makes it so much more productive for me to just get it in done in a one and done job, okay? So this leads us to number seven, which is just practicing record. The hardest part about creating an online course, again, is that we think of the outcome and we get so stuck in the outcome that we don't even think of, oh my God, what could I do? If I broke everything down, just like I did in these videos, in this baby steps, it would be so much easier to accomplish an online course because it's really not that hard, okay? So, pressing record and getting things done. Again, I find it super helpful to just do it all in one day. So you wanna have all the designs done and then have your outline ready to go and create at least, depending on how many modules you have in your program, record on one whole day or split it up into two days, whatever feels good to you. And the last process is that give yourself grace. Recording these modules are not easy and sometimes you're gonna have to do it over. That is okay, that is part of what it takes. But also remember that if you're halfway through the module and you said an um, or you said a uh, or you hesitated, like dude, that's totally okay, it's normal. You're recording a presentation for your students. Try to limit that as much as possible. That's why I have an outline, that's why I have notes. But if it happens, it happens. You're human and it's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. Remember that you review a course every year, at least twice a year. So you can always go back and edit it if you had complaints or if you felt you didn't accomplish it or you didn't give enough information that is needed for your ideal client. And I highly recommend you go back and edit those courses because it's just important. You wanna keep those things up to date. As soon as you finish recording, the very last thing you wanna do is upload it to the platform that you need to upload it for. And that's it, and you're ready to go and you have created your online course. I hope this video was super helpful. I hope you got a lot out of it. Let me know if you have any questions below, but until next time, my friends, a lot of light and love, and I will see you soon. Bye.